Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Stargirl Season 3 Review Series. And today I am going to be talking about Episode 3, Frenemies Chapter 3, The Blackmail, which I have just finished watching. And this episode was absolutely brilliant. I really enjoyed every second of this and it was a lot of fun and it was a great continuation and follow-up to Episode 2. So... As we all know, the gambler was murdered at the end of episode one. And as we saw in episode two, all fingers so far pointed at Cindy Burham. And while we know that Cindy Burham is trying to get into the good books of the JSA, trying to be more of a team player, anybody who knows her, she's got her own agenda. She's up to something. And you can't help but feel that she's playing everyone like a fiddle. And we also saw at the end of episode two, the Crocs were acting very suspicious. And they were both saying to each other that no one can find out what's happened. What are they talking about? Could they be talking about the murder of the gambler? Or could they be talking about something completely different? And this episode... In particular, we have possibly another suspect for the murder of the gambler. And we saw at the end, which we'll get to eventually, the person we thought was the killer of the gambler. It doesn't look like it's that person. It looks like it's someone completely different. Although nobody was actually revealed yet. But we could safely say that one suspect is off the list and there's a new one been added who we don't know yet but it's very interesting and very enjoyable what they've been doing with stargirl because for the past two seasons it's been more or less about fight the bad guy or fight a team of bad guys nothing wrong with that i think that's been really good they've done a great job with that however for this season which i've enjoyed so far even though we're only three episodes in already i've really enjoyed the murder mystery and detective story that they've been trying to tell for this season i think it's been very enjoyable and it's really cool to see stargirl and all of her friends trying to use their head more so they're more or less not using their powers or their abilities they're using their brain more so okay who did this? What's their motivation? Why did they do it? How do we catch them? So it's been really, really good. And, you know, Stargirl, in some ways, I see her as kind of similar to how The Flash was in earlier seasons. Very optimistic, very hopeful, wants to see the best in everyone. Even though all of her friends and family have said, well, no, this person can't be trusted. You know, you've got to be on your guard about everything. But, you know, Courtney wants to see the best in everyone and i kind of like that to her character it's kind of like a combination of early flash and early supergirl you know full of hope very optimistic wants to do the right thing wants to see the good in everyone and that kind of more or less plays into this story arc and i think by the time we get to the end of season three or maybe leading up to season three i'm hoping we'll see a nice switch of her character so obviously we'll still see her as you know the good guy but we'll also see her have a bit more um muscle to her character so she's a good guy but she's not going to be a pushover so hopefully we'll start to see her character toughen up more as we go along here but so far it's been really good you know i've, I've been enjoying uh star girl's character development as well as well as all of her friends as well you know Dr. Midnight, Owlman, and Wildcat. So, you know, I've been really enjoying those aspects to their characters as well. So, with that all said, let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. Let's talk about Episode 3, Frenemies Chapter 3, The Blackmail. So, this episode starts off in classic Stargirl fashion, where we have a little bit of fun in Blue Valley, and we see Sylvester is more or less trying to build his life in Blue Valley as he tries to hit the reset button for himself. And he pretty much feels very much like how Courtney viewed Blue Valley in the first season, except the big difference between him and Courtney is Sylvester is a lot more cynical about things. 
it really shouldn't go as well as it does, given that he's very familiar with things. But we also see throughout this episode, we see that Sylvester's just more or less trying to adjust to building a new life because he's very set in his ways. So we see him bump into Yolanda and we get to hear more about the old JSC. And Yolanda asks Sylvester, what do you think the original Wildcat would have thought of me? And Sylvester pretty much says to her that, I think if the real Wildcat met you, I think he would say you're a total badass. So I think so far that's the nicest thing that Sylvester has ever said since he appeared. And it's probably one of the most genuine things you'll hear from him this season. But that doesn't necessarily make him a nice guy, which we'll get to later on. So Courtney tries to take her own advice by talking to Cameron again. Now, as we all know, Cameron has got his own dark secret as well. He's been developing his own icicle powers, so it's possible he could become the new Dr. Icicle for this season, especially as his evil grandparents have been influencing him. So there's a possible main villain we could get for this season, or at least one of the main villains that we could get a new Dr. Icicle. So we see Cameron bluntly says to Courtney, you know, he's not interested and he blows her off before going to class and gets more angry at his teacher who's just trying to help him. And this leads to a real epic confrontation between Rick and Cameron. And it's kind of funny because Rick was kind of like how Cameron was when we first met him. Didn't want any help, just wanted to be on his own and do things his way. So it's kind of cool to see how his character has developed since he became the new hour man and we see rick and cameron getting each other's faces he said look she's just trying to help you and cameron says you know what just back off i don't need you so he's more or less trying to do a reset button for himself and as i've mentioned already we know that cameron could become the new dr icicle when the time comes as we also see with the Crocs, they've been acting very suspiciously as well, as we saw at the end of episode two. And they're continuing to help press their own reset button, you know, by invading the Whitmore Duggan house, preparing breakfast for them. And then Paula going to Barbara for help, as we saw in the last episode, which forces her to see Barbara's problems as well. And Paula does her thing and basically threatens the man harassing Barbara at work. Regardless, so Barbara goes to support Paula because she truly sees that she is trying to change. And we see a nice friendship growing between the two parents. How long will it last? We don't know. But for the most part, it's nice to see the two mums are actually bonding with each other. So who knows, really? Now, in terms of who the killer could be, Cindy drops the clue right into Beth's lap without Beth realising who it's coming from. And because this clue is a form of blackmail against the Croc family, she doesn't even worry about it, which adds a bit more motivation and evidence to the Crocs killing the gambler. So we see the JSA putting these clues together and they begin to discuss what they should do. And what's been nice about this is that although they're a team, they're not always going to agree on everything. They're not always going to be on the same page. So I kind of like that dynamic. So they, they're like a family and they're friends, but they're not always going to agree with one another. So I kind of like that. It makes it much more believable. We see them constantly argue as they always do with none of them ever feeling out of place. But it's cool to see how each character has developed since they all first met each other back in season one. So we see Cindy Berman basically tricks Sylvester into going after the Crocs in a way to get into the good books of the JSA, who clearly don't want her there. Well, for the most part, Yolanda has made it very, very clear that she doesn't want Cindy. And even though Courtney is doing her very best to try and see the good in Cindy and give her the benefit of the doubt, you know, obviously her opinion is kind of torn at the moment. So it's kind of cool we're seeing that as well. And then we get... A real epic fight scene here. We see Sylvester attacking the Crocs at the supermarkets. And, you know, I really enjoyed the fight scene in the last season with Owlman. But this one was really fun, but in a different way. And we see Sylvester and the Crocs go at it in the supermarket. 
really fun comic book stuff here and we get to see something that we haven't really seen properly since we were first introduced to the original Starman. we got to see more of a dark vicious side to him and he actually tries to kill the crocs with the cosmic staff and thankfully pat intervenes before things really get out of hand and this leads to a very emotional scene with pat and sylvester and sylvester more or less yells at pat saying why are you defending them you are supposed to be on my team. You're supposed to be on my side. You're my sidekick. And Pat says, listen, I'm nobody's sidekick. I'm telling you that this is not the way to do things. You need to be a better person. You know, if you want to be here in Blue Valley, you've got to prove it to everyone. And we see Sylvester finally gets being told why being Stargirl means so much to Courtney because Courtney never knew her real dad and if you want to be part of her life you've got to be more of a father figure someone that Courtney can look up to very powerful and emotional scene with these two absolutely love this as we move along towards the end of this episode we see Cameron apologizes to Courtney and walks with her and then suddenly he leaves very abruptly as he bursts a few tires using his icicle powers and we also see that someone has been surveying blue valley and the murder scene of where the gambler was killed and we see sylvester returns to the crime scene and we see him acting very suspiciously and he gets pulled up into the sky disappears for a few seconds gets aggressively thrown back down and he's knocked unconscious and he's bleeding from head to toe and we hear a very loud roaring sound what it was we don't know but we don't see it and that is how we end episode three overall i thought this was fantastic i love the supermarket fight scene with sylvester and the crocs i thought that was a lot of fun and it was cool to see cameron developing his own icicle powers as they're teasing him to become one of the main villains of the show and you know so far sylvester has been acting very weird very aggressive you know just punching everyone and asking questions after but it doesn't look like he's the gambler's killer so far could it be the croc still who knows but it looks like there's another suspect out there who could have killed the gambler and what was that roaring sound at the end who knows but really good way they're just constantly teasing you in this episode and as i said this season has been very different but at the same time different can be good and it's been very enjoyable and i'm really looking forward to seeing how this is all going to play out so that's going to be it for me i'm going to wrap this up now what was your thoughts on episode three did you enjoy it do you think Sylvester could be the gambler's killer? And what do you think that roaring sound was at the end? Do you think it could be someone completely different? And also, what's the connection to Cindy? She may not be the killer, but is she involved in some way? And also, what exactly are the crocs hiding? And also, what about Cameron? Is it possible he could become the new dr icicle or the icicle so to speak and also what would be courtney's reaction if she did learn the truth about cameron and his suspicious behavior you know what to do guys hit the like button hit the subscribe button leave your thoughts and comments down below and i will see all of you next time for another edition of the stargirl season 3 review series where i am going to be talking about episode 4 which I am very much looking forward to talking about and seeing, especially with the way this episode played out and with the way it's ended. Should be a lot of fun and I can't wait. So until next time, take care everybody and stay safe. And once again, as always, much appreciated. Thanks for listening.